When a person starts to get this disease, most commonly what they experience is painless, gradual onset weakness. And it most often affects someone's distal, upper or lower extremity. So some very common things that we hear. I noticed I didn't have the, the same spring in my right leg. And I wondered, you know, maybe, maybe I needed to take a break from running or get a different pair of socks. Or someone might say, I, I noticed it was getting a little bit harder for me to button the top button on my dress shirts. And I wondered if, you know, maybe I just overdid it, needed to take some anti-inflammatories, those kinds of things. And as the disease progresses, the weakness becomes more obvious and people start to notice the shrinkage of their muscles, which we call atrophy. And they start to notice twitching, which we call fasciculations and cramps. Most commonly, the disease has what we call limb onset, meaning it starts in an arm or a leg. That's about two thirds of cases. Then the next most common uh, presentation is bulbar onset, which means it starts in the speech and swallowing muscles. That's almost a third of cases. And all the rest, which again is a very small percentage, is what we call respiratory onset, where it starts in the breathing muscles. And that one tends to be very difficult to diagnose. ALS most commonly presents with painless weakness. And again, most commonly in a limb, like in a hand or a, a foot, less commonly in the bulbar muscles where people might notice a slight change in their speech or their swallowing. You know, it's usually accompanied later by fasciculations, muscle twitching or muscle cramping. Rarely ALS can start with fasciculations or cramping, but you know, we do get a lot of calls and emails from people around the world who are experiencing muscle twitching and they're worried that they have ALS. Most people who have muscle twitching will not have ALS, the vast majority will not have ALS. Almost everyone in the world gets muscle twitching at some point. You know, it's, it's called benign fasciculations. And I do agree that it can be worrisome when that happens. If someone's worried that they might have ALS, uh, just go see a neurologist. You know, neurologists, even, even general community neurologists are really good at, are doing, you know, careful neurological exams to make sure that there's no other worrisome symptoms like muscle atrophy or weakness or, increased reflexes and, you know, EMGs are really easy to get for uh, general community neurologists. So I would say that if a person has muscle twitching or any other symptom and they're worried, they should get an appointment with a neurologist. And if they're still not satisfied, have the neurologist do an EMG. That's a really good way to screen for ALS.